Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. So when I was like a teenager, when I started getting into graffiti and art, I was like, wow, one day I would love to be able to draw anything. And I haven't arrived, but I'm getting closer because I love drawing and I love practicing everything behind me. We're gonna draw in today's video and it's super wonderful. Some warm ups, some different mediums, colored pencils, charcoal, just kidding, no charcoal, but some awesome stuff. So let's begin. Do you hear that? That's thunder outside. Holy mackerel. And look at how dirty this table is. Holy lord. Anyways, let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns. So we're starting off with some warm-ups. Absolutely love warming up. And I think warming up, even though it sounds like a sports thing, it's completely valid in drawing or illustrating. And for me specifically, you know, I'm way more focused when starting a bigger project if I do a couple warm-ups. Also, quicker sketches are very important, I think, to learn and to just get done with little drawings. So I just printed out a couple pictures of some jaguars or some panthers, I forget which ones. This guy looks like a bear. This guy right here, I'm starting, looks like a Rottweiler. And they're just quick. I think these are like 10 minute, 20 minute max sketches. Um, and I'm actually trying to get away from portraiture a lot because I do it too much and I feel like I've pigeonholed myself. I want to be able to draw anything, right? So like still lifes or animals, anything I can really see. But this was just a great exercise using some colored pencils. I really like these colored pencils. Let's keep using these with some quicker, fun sketches. I'm going to do four self-portraits. Hopefully I can bang these out today with some colored pencils. And so, yeah, colored pencils are pretty sweet and I like them because they're like very soft. So you could get really hard, opaque lines, but also very like thin, light lines to kind of begin sketches. So you can see I'm slowly making these lines bolder and bolder and you can get great values out of them. And they're just fun. And so why not? And so like when I was younger, um, and I started with graffiti that I was really interested in that I wanted to do graffiti characters But you know painting naturalism and quote-unquote realistic painting didn't come You know actually it did come actually very quickly within my desires And it was because I listened to a lot of people talk about drawing and painting and you know the, the general consensus consensus is that within realism and traditional kind of um, portraiture and things like that and human anatomy you know a theory of you know color and form in space and you know how to represent things that you observe with your eye onto a piece of paper there's great techniques and skills you build that are fundamental that can then inform your other things. So I really thought and I agree with and subscribe to the idea that you should learn fundamentals within drawing to then be able to draw whatever you want. So I don't do much fantastical like conceptual work anymore. I definitely do, not as much as I oil paint or do traditional like drawing, but it certainly informs the fantastical stuff. And so that was kind of my thinking. And I did that I think from an early stage within my repertoire of drawing and painting or whatever artistic path you want to call it. And so I think that was something that helped me out. And I also really am in love with it. Like I'm extremely passionate about naturalistic painting and, you know, to be able to do these portraits, even though this purple guy is not super strong, it was like always my dream to be able to do portraits like this. Um, and it's really awesome. And these are only like, you know, five inches. And I, I should do more sketches like these because they're really quick, you know, 30 minutes to be able to do this. It's really wonderful, so fun and very low stress, you know, just very sketchy. These sketches, sketches are important. You know, it's great to do a really beautiful painting that takes 10 hours or a drawing that takes 10 hours, but you're never going to get there to a successful long drawing or painting if you don't do hundreds and hundreds of smaller sketches. But anyways, so we're moving on to a longer drawing, this longer drawing. It's just of a girl. Two, we're doing two longer portraits of women. Um, and also, by the way, this whole um, drawing was live, stream, live streamed on Patreon. Um, I go live every week, so check that out if you're interested in real-time process. Um, this portrait gave me a lot of trouble, and if you could see the reference photo, it's a beautiful reference photo. It has all of the light designs and things I'm interested in. That's why I drew it, but it's so weird. I didn't realize till like midway through, I don't know why, that you know, her eyes are a little big, her nose is snatched, her neck is extra thin. It's clearly, I think, Photoshop. It's not correct human anatomy. And it looks like basically a Disney character 
but in like a photorealistic way. So I think it's really cool. It looks like a Disney princess to me. It looks like Jasmine from Aladdin or whatever, but um, I just thought I'd mention that. And super like rough start. I mean, just watching this time lapse is like, what am I doing? I must have not been really warmed up or just rusty. I'm also using like a 9B pencil, which is very strange. This should be, should have been a charcoal drawing. Lead is very messy and like lead, lead paint, or I mean, excuse me, graphite takes a while, but you know, I bring it around. One of the things that I always go through, through paintings and drawings or any kind of creative project for that matter, and I think people share this opinion, is it's sort of like emotional roller coaster you go through. So you kind of like start off, you're excited, you're motivated, and then midway through or some stage in after putting in a lot of work, you get very bogged down, you get frustrated, it's not turning out how you want. Um, and that happens to me almost every time. And I think that's a stage where actually people give up um, and it's like a very known thing. But you know, if you just push through and for me in my experience, when I push through, you know, I can always bring it around. Um, and you kind of just have to pass that hump. It's like writer's block or runner's wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so it's the same with this drawing. You could see this reference is an absolutely stunning photo. Whoever, whatever photographer took this, it's just awesome. And it's very unique. And I knew it was going to be challenging because look at the light design. It's coming left to right, just hitting her cheek and back. Most of her face is in shadow, but there's that delicious spotlight on her left eye or her right eye are left viewing it, but it was just awesome, but I knew it was gonna be challenging and I was frustrated midway through again. But you know, something that I think, you know, there's a lot of things within looking back on my kind of, again, artistic career, whatever you wanna call it, the five years I've taken art seriously, five or six years, you know, there's a lot of things I'd change and I wish I'd done better, like, you know, practicing more, um, just in different ways and whatever. But one of the things I think I've actually was really good at and one of my traits that I like hold dear to myself that I think helped me, and this is something for life, I'm not a motivational speaker, but um, specifically with drawing and painting and creative projects is persisting through those emotional roller coasters. And even though I didn't think things were turning out good, you know, one of my like things I hold myself to every time I try to create something is to see it through, to, you know, put in all the work, hold myself to the highest standard and I really thought like this when I was like just beginning out to just give it my best effort and to finish things you want to execute you want to finish even if you think it's the worst thing in the world you know just to put in all of that effort um, and I still do that today so anyways mini rant you can see that this is like kind of sloppy again I'm using these weird pencils I probably shouldn't have been but it was kind of just a fun sketch I think this was only two hours but it came out pretty successful I'm really happy with it and I think it's really beautiful I think I you know nailed the pose and the emotion and obviously the values are fine um, I could have certainly gotten darker within the eyes and there's different places where I could have obviously been better but yeah that was four bang and drawings oh yeah This video would not be possible without the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes ranging from all sorts of creative and entrepreneurial genres, and it's taught by the leading professionals in those disciplines. The entire user interface, the website, the class selection, the curriculum, the assignments, it's all of the highest quality Skillshare has been in the game for a while, and it's really a, a platform to learn. And whether you're a real newbie, beginner or a career professional looking to dive into another creative outlet, Skillshare's classes range from every sort of class for every sort of person. And for less than $10 a month, you can't beat the price compared to in-person classes. You know, one of my favorite classes that I learned a lot from, from the homie Jazza, Mastering Illustration, a really great fundamental class on color theory and everything to do with illustrating. Skillshare is an awesome platform. It's helped me before. I think it could help you. If you click the link in the video description, you'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. That's it, I love to rant. I love to draw also and paint. So, you know, maybe you learned something or got some insight to drawing or my path, something that you will hear every professional artist and illustrator say about how to get better at drawing is that there is no secret. There is no um, instruction guide or recipe that um, Betty Crocker or Martha Stewart can give you. It's just hard work and it's just drawing for 
hundreds and thousands of hours and drawing as much as you possibly can for months and years. And I know that sounds like a lot and that's what you don't want to hear. Um, but that's what it takes, especially in this kind of traditional world of drawing with, you know, pencils and paintbrushes, these skills you acquire over time. And the fun part is learning the skills slowly, you know, it like wouldn't be fun if you just woke up and became a master drawer painter. It's like all about the journey. Um, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but it is what it is. Stop DM DMing me, asking me how to get better at drawing in one hour. Cause it's impossible. Watch the Sluniverse podcast. It's coming out. It should be out definitely by the time this video comes out. And it's really exciting. That's where I'm recording this voiceover. Um, and follow me on Instagram and stay tuned for all the crazy wacky projects. I can't even tell you the epicness that I'm starting. Huge projects. All right. See ya.